Hello friend and welcome back to Food is My Love Language. I am Kim and today we are getting a bunch of stuff out of my freezer um, so that we can can it, make it shelf stable in order for me to make room in my freezer. So in the sink I've got um, a bunch of blackberries that are defrosting. These are all wild blackberries. I paid nothing for them. All I had to do was go and forage them. It took me about two days and I got about, um, I don't know, 30 four cup bag so 120 cups of blueberries for nothing i also have a bag in there of figs that my aunt generously gave me uh, i've got some cranberries a bunch of cranberries and if you saw my pantry uh, video recently i'll link that up there uh, you'll see that i already have a bunch of cranberry sauce so i'm not sure how i'm gonna can these yet or what i'm gonna do with them um, but i also have tomatoes here so I think we're going to make some tomato sauce with these. Don't know what I'm going to do with the cranberries. We're going to make some fig balsamic jam. And with the blackberries, I'm going to do part of them. I'm going to use part of them to make a wild blackberry barbecue sauce. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the other one. So stick around. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the little bell to get notified as I release new videos. Okay, so we're going to start with the fig balsamic jam because we've got to cook that down for 45 to 55 minutes. So I've got eight cups of figs. These were frozen. Uh, I got these from my aunt, which was lovely uh, earlier this summer when they were ripe. And so I've just cut these up into small pieces and we're going to put this in the pot. So to that, we're going to add a half a cup of balsamic vinegar, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. So I've just got Himalayan pink salt here, half a teaspoon red chili flakes. Now this is totally optional, but I think it will add a nice spice to it. We need half a cup water. Now this looks murky because this is the same measuring cup that I use for the vinegar. So I keep my lemons in the freezer. Generally, if you're going to use lemons, you're either using the peel or you're using the juice. Um, and so I don't have lemons go bad anymore. I just keep them in the freezer. This is a tip from a friend of mine. Bless her heart for sharing that with me. So we need the peel of half a lemon. So we're just going to grate it frozen. So that's about half there. And then I'll just simply take this and put it back in the bag. Then I can still use it for the juice or for more of the peel if needed. And the last thing we need is four cups of white sugar. So I'm just going to make sure that I give this a stir before I put the sugar in. So we're going to turn up the heat to high and we're going to bring this to a boil, cook for 45 to 55 minutes. It says until mixture thickens and darkens in color, and then we're going to add the remaining one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar for the last 10 minutes of cooking time. So let's throw this on the stove and we'll move on to the next thing. Wild blackberry barbecue sauce. So I'm doing a triple recipe here. I've got 10 and a half cups of blackberries. And again, I just foraged these, whoo, foraged these this summer and bag them all up and wash them and then bag them and put them in the freezer. But we need to get some of these out and I have a ton of these left. So we need three cups water because again, we're tripling this. We need three quarters cup times three of ketchup. We need uh, three quarters cups of honey. So I've got three quarters of a cup of honey here. three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, one and a half teaspoons black ground pepper, one and a half teaspoons of ground dried ginger. We need three teaspoons of paprika. I'm gonna use smoked paprika because it'll give it a nice smoky flavor. Four and a half teaspoons of chili powder. We need six teaspoons of sriracha, three tablespoons of mustard, six tablespoons of cider vinegar. 
Now we also need dark brown sugar, but I am out. So I'm going to show you how I make my own brown sugar. So I've been making my own brown sugar for, I don't know, six months now or so. It's so easy. It means I no longer have to buy brown sugar or freak out when I don't have any. This is how easy it is. It is all it is, is white sugar. So you just put in however much white sugar. I don't even do this by measurement. I just do this by color. And I usually do enough for a container like this that I keep in the cupboard. All right, good enough. So all we're going to do, now you can do with this with electric beaters or whatever you have. Electric beaters would probably work totally fine for this. I'm just going to turn it on. I've got some blackstrap molasses here. You could do it with any kind of molasses you wanted to. And all I'm going to do is start to drizzle in some molasses. So I just start with whatever amount I feel like is good for that amount of sugar. And it's going to look really clumpy when you first do it. There's lots of little black clumps in here. But as just give it time, let it mix around. And as it mixes around, you'll see it become a more even uh, color as those molasses mix into the sugar. Then you just keep adding more molasses as you want to till you get to the color of brown sugar or the depth of flavor of the brown sugar that you're looking for. So as you can see, if I stop this and pull this up, you're going to see that it's a very even color now. It still has a bit, bit more to mix in and I want to probably make it a little bit more. I want to add a little bit more molasses to it, but literally it's that easy. You can make light brown sugar, dark brown sugar, you know, and really cater it to your own tastes. I just want to make sure it's all mixed in there really well. And I'm going to add just a touch more because that's a little bit on the light side. So as you can see, that just makes a beautiful brown sugar. And that's literally all there is to making brown sugar. It is so simple. I love the fact that I don't have to buy it anymore and that I can, you know, make lighter brown sugar, darker brown sugar, depending on what I'm making. When I'm done, I just grab my container. I've got one of those little clay things in here that keeps it moist. I just throw it in. And now I've got brown sugar until I need it again, at which time I just make more. Okay, so we just need a few more ingredients. We need some brown sugar here, so I think we need one and a half cups. And we need some minced garlic. Okay, so the last thing we need are three teaspoons of garlic. And that is it for the ingredients. So we're going to give this a good stir. We're going to bring it to a boil, turn it down to a simmer, and let it simmer for at least 30 minutes. Okay, so balsamic um, fig jam is almost done. I've uh, turned off the timer. I'm going to put in a tablespoon of balsamic, which we need to add in at this point. Let it go for another 10 minutes. While I'm doing that and making sure that that doesn't burn because it's getting quite thick, um, I just brought out the jars that I'm going to use for the fig balsamic jam, which are this size, um, because it's not something we'll use a lot, and this way I can also give it away um, for gifts. So it's a nice little size. You could use it in a charcuterie board, um, you know, spread it on some more tortillas or crackers and cheese or something like that. So this is the perfect size for it. So I'm going to get those washed. My canner is getting um, warmed up, so we'll be able to start the canning process shortly. So I just took it off the stove. It's looking really thick. It's looking beautiful, actually. It smells amazing. But we want to make sure that it's going to set. So the best way to do this is I just throw a couple of teaspoons and a couple of small plates in my freezer before I start any kind of canning if I'm doing it this way without pectin. So let me grab those out of the freezer. What we're going to do is just get a little bit, put it on the plate, 
and we're going to put it back in the freezer for a minute. I can see that this looks like it is going to set just fine, but we're basically going to pop it in the freezer, let it sit for a minute. I'll put that in with it, and then we'll check the texture. And if the texture looks like uh, a set texture, then we're good to go. Okay, so this was in the freezer just for like, I don't know, 30 seconds or a minute. But you can see it's pretty thick. When I touch this, it kind of lifts up. So this is perfect. This is exactly the texture that I want. Uh, and so I have no hesitations about canning this at this point. And oh my God, it smells delicious. So I'm just going to do a little taste test here. Oh my God. So freaking good. All right, let's get ready to can this up. Okay, so I've got all my jars. These are all clean. My lids and rings are all clean. These just have hot water sitting in them so that when we put this hot jam in there and then put it in the uh, canner that's warming up, these don't crack. So I'm just going to dump those out as I'm ready to use them. I just stick my funnel in here. Now you can absolutely use a ladle, but if you're using really small jars like this, there's really no point because it's such a minute amount. So we need about a centimeter of headspace, it says. There we go. Now there are headspace tools. If you are not comfortable with eyeballing it, and if you're just starting out, I would say that's probably the way you want to go. Next thing we're going to do is debubble. So we need to just run some kind of non-metallic tool around in here to make sure there's no air bubbles in here. That looks good. Now I'm going to get a clean cloth and some hot water on it. And that's to wipe the rims of these jars. So if we got any of the jam on the edges, it's going to prevent this from sealing really well. So we just want to make sure that we've cleaned it really well. Oops, that one will need washing. Here we go. We're going to finger tight. Perfect. So usually with these little jars, I just do two at a time. And then as soon as I'm done with them, I pop them in the canner. So we'll pop these in the canner now. And then we'll go on and do the rest of them. So I've just popped the lid on my canner there and we're gonna bring it up to a boil. Once it's boiling, I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes. We'll process those for 10 minutes. And by that time, we should be able to get our blackberry uh, barbecue sauce into jars and ready to go into the canner. Okay, so the blackberry barbecue sauce is looking really, really good. I would say it's close to being done, although I'm going to let it thicken up a little bit. I took the immersion blender and just blended it up because I want a nice, smooth barbecue sauce. We're going to put this in a strainer when it's done or through a strainer. Um, in the meantime, I want to let it boil down a little bit so it gets a little bit thicker. Now our timer went off for the fig jam, so I'm going to turn off my stove. I'm going to let this cool down for five minutes and then we're going to take these out. So all we need to do now is pull these out of the canner. And set them down. Now we're not going to touch them for 24 hours. We want to make sure that all of them seal. And we'll know that because the top will go concave. And we should start hearing some popping soon as well. Okay, and then that's it. We're going to let these sit for 24 hours and then we'll make sure that they've all sealed and then we'll take off the rings and they'll be ready to go. That's the sweet sound of sealing. So our blackberry barbecue sauce processed for 20 minutes for pint jars at my altitude. You'll need to check for your own altitude uh, and depending on what size canning jars you're using. Uh, and then I let it sit for five minutes. So now we're ready to pull it out and let it sit for 24 hours and seal. Ooh, that one popped before I even pulled it out. 
Can you see the gorgeous color of that? It's beautiful. So I still have all of this to can still. So I've got blackberries, cranberries, and tomatoes. I'm going to worry about the blackberries and the cranberries first because I want to get those canned up. So I think I am going to raw pack the blackberries, meaning I'm not going to heat them. I'm just going to heat the syrup that's going to go over them. And then I think I'm going to hot pack the cranberries because they'll hold up um, better uh, with a hot pack. And there won't be so much uh, room in the jar after they do their canning or their processing. So this is an invaluable book, Bernardin Complete Guide of Home Preserving. Uh, pressure canning, water bath canning, lots and lots of recipes, and really the how-to. So a lot of the canning that I learned, I learned how to do out of this book. So the syrup I'm gonna use for both of these is an extra light syrup, meaning not much sugar. I don't need to add a bunch of sugar in, but if you just added water in with them, then all of the sweetness of them would leach into the water. So we wanna make sure that there's a little bit of sugar, at least in the syrup, um, so it doesn't leach the uh, sweetness of the berries into the liquid. So for the extra light syrup, I need one and a quarter cups of sugar and five and a half cups of water, and we're gonna double this because we're doing both the cranberries and the blackberries. So I just put that on the stove. We're going to start simmering it and I'm going to get my jars ready and start raw packing the blackberries. So I brought the syrup to a boil and now it's just going to simmer for a few minutes until we're ready for it. In the meantime, I'm going to take all of my blackberries and just pour them in a bowl so it's easier to pull them out. Now I think next year when I forage for my blackberries, I think I will just can up what I need, you know, make sure I go when I have time to can, uh, because this way they're definitely losing a lot of their firmness because they've come out of the freezer. So they're a little more mushy. Now, this means I, you know, I can still use them in baking. I can still throw them on yogurt. Um, there's still lots I can do with them. They're just not really going to hold up their shape as well as they would if they were frozen or if I'd done this right away when I came back from foraging uh, this summer. Woo! Making a mess again. Whoa, that was close. So our syrup is done, we're ready to start. So I'm just gonna empty the first jar and we're gonna start with a little bit of the syrup first. That's about half a cup. And then we're going to start putting our berries in here. I should probably use that. Make less of a mess anyways. So we're needing about a half an inch of head space. So I'm just going to give those a little shakes we can get as many berries in as possible it's probably good i'm also going to put some of the berry juice in here because that's really going to help keep that berry flavor half an inch headspace perfect we're going to debubble wipe the rim Put the lid on and it is as easy as that. We'll put it in the canner. I'll get the rest done. And then let's see how long we need to process it for. So raw packed, pint size, we're going to process these for 15 minutes. Okay, we are in the home stretch. I've got probably another pint or two of the blackberries. And once we're done with the syrup for that, we're going to put the cranberries in and hot pack them. Okay, so all we're going to do now is take the cranberries, put them in the syrup. We're going to give them a stir and just let them sit there just till they're warmed through. And then we're going to put them into the jars. So that just took a few minutes for the cranberries to be heated through. So I've got my hot jars here. And I'm just going to start scooping the berries in. 
I want mostly berries and whatever juice I need or syrup I need to fill that up. That way we'll have these as shelf stable cranberries. You need about a half an inch of headspace. And then we're just going to fill the remainder of the jar with this syrup. Here we go. Make sure there's no air bubbles. That's a bit full. With the syrup in there. I'm just going to take out a few of those because you definitely need whatever headspace it says you need you need to make sure that you have that otherwise your jars will not seal properly so we got our air bubbles out wipe the rim put on the lid and we're going to put these in with the rest of the blackberries that are canning because they all have to can for 15 minutes for pint jars all right, friends, so I managed to clean up the kitchen while I was waiting for the cranberries. Woo, look at those. Beautiful, beautiful. While I was waiting for those to finish processing. So that's it. My items that I wanted to get moved from my freezer to my shelf are now done. I think the only thing I didn't get to was the tomatoes. But I think what I'm just going to do is roast them tomorrow and then I'll use them in our meals for the next few days that way they need to be used anyways and I don't need to do any more processing because tomorrow's Monday and I'm back to work so thank you so much for hanging out with me while I moved these things from the freezer to the shelf see you next time be sure to hit that subscribe button and the little bell to get notified as I release new videos.